Okay, I guess I'll go ahead and call to order the, the meeting of, uh, what day is it today? April 27, 2020. Uh, this is the Board of Directors meeting of Community Television of Santa Cruz County. Would the secretary please call the roll? Yes, Chair Maziarz. Here. Director Hall. Here. Director Rand. Director Mannheim. Present and somewhat accounted for. <laughs> Director O'Driscoll. Here. Director Lanier. Here. <laughs> Director Shaw. Here. Director Gudger. Here. Okay. All right. Do we know if my tray is planning? I mean, if um, Matilda's planning on joining us? She didn't say that she wasn't. Okay. Uh, can I delegate contacting her? Uh, Keith, do you mind contacting her somehow to see if she will join us? Give it a shot. Okay, thank you. All right, so that's item number one down. We can move on to item number two, which is oral communications. Looks like my mouse isn't working, so I'll have to use the trackpad. Um, is there anybody from the public here who wants to comment? Hearing none, we can move on to item number three. Consideration of late additions to the agenda. Any additions or deletions? Is there anything that staff or board members want to modify, add, or delete? Okay, hearing none, hearing yawns and crickets, uh, we will move on to uh, our consent agenda, which is items four, five, and six. Approve the minutes. Uh, item number four is approve the minutes of our March 23rd meeting. Item five is to approve the minutes of our special meeting of April 21st. And item six is to uh, approve the finance committee recommendations to accept the March 2020 financial reports. Um, would finance committee chair uh, Joe Hall like to comment on the financial reports? Actually, we're going to be doing that later in the agenda and that will be handled under uh, number nine right okay in that case we can uh well i guess i can entertain a motion or are there any questions uh, any items for discussion any uh clarification anybody wants any corrections to the minutes anybody wants to make or uh if not i will entertain a motion for our consent agenda so move all right am i moving a... both of them can i move them both together uh all three of them yes just stay in your motion, it's all three of them. Yes. All right, we have a, all three. Okay, so we have a motion from Director Mannheim and a second from Director O'Driscoll, is that correct? Okay. All right, uh, uh, can we call the roll for the vote please, Secretary Laurent? Yes, Director Hall. Yes. Director O'Driscoll. Yes. Director Lanier. Yes. Director Mannheim. Yep. Director Shaw. Yes. Director Gudger. Yes. Director Laurent. Yes. Chair Maziarz. Yes. All right. That was easy enough. Moving right along to our regular agenda. Item number seven is a report from the Ad Hoc Facilities Committee. I don't know if we have such a thing um, prepared. Is, does anybody want to comment on that or should we just table that for the time being? Well, I have a question about that, and this has to do with our Aptos um, project, I guess you'd call it. Yeah, sure. I mean, given yeah. our given our situation, are we what's our are we committed to this? I'm wondering about the whole notion of co-working in this new era, both for our downtown and our Aptos and and what folks think about that. You know, is, is that still gonna be a thing? Do we convert to offices? How do we, we have to kind of think that through. Exactly. Um, there was some discussion in our finance committee meeting. I don't know if, if Becca or finance committee members care to comment on that. Well, I'll say a few words. Tom can say a few words and Keith can and Becca can, because those are all things we talked about. Becca has some ideas about the safety aspect that you were talking about. and in the times we're in. Um, my point of view was on it, not to get in, that we should explore it a little more on the Rio del Mar 
site simply because it's a good site. They may not have a lot of interest, but we need to see if the numbers work and if they're flexible on their rent because their rent uh, from what Keith has looked at uh, wasn't really feasible for us. So uh, I'll let Becca talk about some of her ideas on the safety aspect because it deals exactly with what you said, the, down, the existing one and anything in the future. So uh, Keith or Tom, do you want to chime in next? Well, the one thing that I would say is, um, in answer to your question, Guy, um, there isn't a commitment at this point. It's just something we're exploring. Um, and um, I, I raised the same question at the Finance Committee, does it make sense right now? Um, I think it does make sense for us to continue exploring it um, before we actually, you know, made a decision to move forward, we want to have a more thorough look at both where we are financially at that point, what, what it looks like in terms of what's going on in terms of public. Okay, well, that makes sense. I, I guess I just wasn't sure how far down the, the road we were. So we're exploring this, which I think is a good thing. Um, you know, I think as the future unfolds, you know, the whole notion of work is and where people work is changing. And it may be that um, these kinds of places are um, needed or necessary um, rather than just people being in their homes like we are right now, but that there are remote workspaces. It, it may be a good place to be. So, okay, I just didn't know how, how far we were committed. So I, I agree that we should keep looking at it. Keith, do you want to say anything? And then I'd like Becca to talk about some of the safety points, because I think that was important when I heard that. I said, well, this is something that everybody should hear about. I agree. Keith? I think where we left it was asking Becca if she could talk to either Barbara or the real estate agents to see if with things happening the way they are, um, obviously some of those restaurants who said they were going to go into the, the center are probably not going to at this point, uh, if maybe they would be more flexible in terms of cutting us a better deal on the rent. So Becca, to you. Yeah, well, one of the things I think is, I think that um, I'm in touch with a lot of different co-working centers because, you know, we have groups and <laughs> newsletters and all that sort of thing. So uh, nobody's thinking that co-working is over. And in fact, some people, like right now, you can imagine there are families at home with parents who both work, who are working at home and have kids. And so some of them probably want a place to go, like to take a shift off from home and go somewhere quiet and work. And we do have people coming to the co-working center. I was there yesterday, I think. The days just run into each other to sign checks. And I think and there were people there when I was there. So uh, people are definitely using their offices, but there were people in the co-working area too, just one or two. Um, you might like to know, you probably don't know, and I should probably show you, and probably Janice too. Um, we have a dashboard for the co-working center where people can log on at home and see who's there and how many people are there. So they can know when no one's there and they can go in if there's just one or two people there, they might choose to go. And we have a couple of phone booths that people have been setting up inside also, which they're not supposed to do, but, <laughs> but we're not blocking them from doing that. So people are being careful. And what we're gonna do is increase our cleaning so that we now have cleaning. If, if we were gonna, when, when, does, when everything is lifted and we can actually entertain the idea of having more people in there. I'm looking into partitions now between the desks. And um, I've, I ordered, I tried to order one today. Hopefully I'll get that order through tomorrow. So Ian and I are gonna test some things. And also we'll probably increase our cleaning schedule so that they clean every day instead of, um, they do twice, they had been doing twice a week up until this virus. So we'll increase that to, so that it's every day. And Ian always cleans every day, but, but we'll get some professional cleaners to do that and set, and take out some of the desks and move them further apart. But we're looking also at some kind of cubicles and some kind of clear partitions so that people are protected, but they, they aren't walled in, they can still see. So um, we're gonna, next time we meet, you'll see some, I, I hope to have some so I can show you what they're like. We'll, um, we'll take pictures for you. We have a couple coming so we can just experiment and see how they work and how they feel. We're surveying, we're trying to survey our 
group there so we can see how they feel. Would they feel comfortable in a cubicle? Do they want to have a clear space? Would they want more offices? That sort of thing to get an idea of what they want. There's a problem with the um, satellite email system right now, so we're not able to email them so easily. But we will we'll get that fixed. They're working on it. So I think that if we can do this thing in Rio Del Mar, we have an opportunity maybe to get a, an excellent space for a really unusually low price. <laughs> so I think I'm, I'm still excited about looking into it. I don't think co-working is gonna go away. And, and I learned recently that there are 9,000 um, independent businesses out there, like people who work from home. So I'm thinking those people could use a break. So right. I, I think, it, and this is a time, if we can, if they, if they lighten up the restrictions on construction, which I think is in the, in the hopper, it's something that's being looked at, we might be able to build it during this time when we can't do anything else anyway. And maybe not, maybe that's my little pipe dream, but <laughs> that's, what, that's where I am at the moment. Okay, good, thank you. Yes, thanks, Becca. Um, do any other board members have any feedback on this item? Okay, hearing none, um, I guess we don't need to take any action on that. Um, uh, I guess I'll ask, uh, is the ad hoc facilities committee, do they have, uh, is there a scheduled meeting um, or is, is this all in your court right now, Becca? Well, we don't have a scheduled meeting because I'm waiting for, um, but I was thinking if I got, if I get to, I got a call into Barbara, who's kind of the co-working person and she's leading us on the lease thing. So if we can get information from her, then I think it makes sense to me. But right now there's nothing to talk about. So as soon as I hear that, I don't know, am I in charge of that committee? I don't think so. I think mm -hmm. Keith is. Keith is, yeah. Keith is, yeah. So that's <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Keith might be trying to talk to Matilda. Oh no, there he is. He's oh, she's here too. Oh, yeah, he's here. Welcome, oh, Matilda. welcome, Matilda. You guys are just playing ping pong. I, I've been here for five minutes. I'm so oh. quiet. <laughs> I, I miss sitting next to you, Matilda. Okay, so um, if there's no further comment on item number seven, we can move on to item number eight, which is an action item. Um, this is a resolution of the Board of Directors of Community TV to authorize our Executive Director to accept on its behalf a CARES Act Economic Injury Disaster Loan, EIDL, from the U.S. Small Business Administration and take all other administrative actions necessary to execute this loan. Um, would staff or for well, the I, presentation? I, I prepared the resolution. Um, we haven't actually been able to apply for the EIDL. There was a little thing I sent to you again. You may This may pop up in your memory. Uh, just one step backwards, we've already applied for the first one and received it. Um, Becca can talk about when that's gonna actually come in, we don't know yet. So that was called the Pay Paycheck Protection Program and that's what on Monday uh, at 10.30, or today, uh, the uh, Small Business Administration opened it up and this is the loan pro or the program that turns into a grant. and. Uh, Becca applied and we were one of the few small businesses that actually got it because we got in early before all the big companies came in and gobbled up all the money, so to speak. What we're talking about now is something a little different. This is a loan. We don't have to in the end use it, but it's another kind of a financial tool we'll have going forward in terms of financing in the next few years if we want to take it. Uh, right now where we're at, Ms. Becca started applying for this loan right after she finished the work on the Paycheck Protection Act and they froze the loan. And uh, Congress has subsequently last week uh, put more money into it and so it may open up. But I'll let you, Becca, go through and talk about uh, where she is on that and also just a brief update even though it isn't quite the same on the Paycheck Protection Program. So why don't we finish up with EDIL and then go to the Paycheck Protection Program. Becca? Okay, <laughs> sorry, it's like a vaudeville show. Um, yeah. uh, this is uh, the, the EDIL is the, uh, what is it, it's the um, 
does that, it's a- Existing Economic Injury Disaster Loan yeah. Program. Yeah, so it, it is a loan and it is, uh, nonprofits can get it, the repayment, if you pay it back over like 30 years and the, the interest rate is 2.75. So it, it would be something that would be easy for us to do. And they spread the payments out over a long time because the idea is to help small businesses. So last time a lot of big businesses got it and snapped it right up. So I was actually on the website applying when it went away. So I didn't get the application in, but I have all the documents. So I was there at 7.30 this morning, hitting refresh, but um, they are what uh, the finally a message came up and it said that there were some people in the queue, like right before me, that got in before they stopped and they're processing them first. And they said information would be made available to small businesses. <laughs> so I don't know how they're going to make it available, but I've been checking all afternoon, all, all every hour I go and check and see if they've opened it up yet. And they haven't. So I imagine we'll be hearing something soon. I'll just keep checking and we're ready. As soon as they open it up, we have all the documents that need to be uploaded. We're all set to go. So that's what, um, it's, it's, a, it's an application that you do online and as you go, you, you finish a section and upload the document and finish a section and upload the document. And so um, you have to have all your documents ready before. And so we're ready. So on the PPP, that's the Paycheck Protection Program. We got, we got that through County Bank, which is an SBA uh, lender and our bank. They, um, today was the most exciting day so far. They have been, um, they, they reserved the funds for us and then they started asking us for a lot of information, which we provided and you guys uh, came together and had a special meeting to give us the most important part, the resolution, we were lacking that. And um, then it just said pending for review for a really long time till this morning when it suddenly said incomplete. And uh, what it was, was they wanted more information. So Mel, Mel got, had the information ready because she's been working with Kowumba and she knew what they would need. <laughs> so she had it. And when they asked, we sent it right over to them and now our status is complete. So that's a good sign. And we got that, that happened within a few hours. So they're really speeding up now. So I think that probably tomorrow we'll hear something about when it will be dispersed. And what this specific item is, is so we don't have to have a special meeting. If somehow Becca can get through and we get an application in and they say you're approved and you need a resolution from your board, allowing you to do this or accept a loan, we've already done it. So there's no rushing around. And I just thought, well, I have no idea what they want. I tried to look at some of the documents and they're rather vague. So, uh, and this one, it's different. It goes directly to SBA. So there could be all sorts of problems filing again, because I don't know if they put extra servers on, if there's going to crashes, who knows what'll happen, but this is just a step to be prepared. I did hear on the news today that they were having problems with the server, so. <laughs> I heard it did crash. Oh. Um, I do, uh, how much are we applying for? I may, I'm sorry if I missed that. Well, they, you don't know until you get in it. I think they offer you a number based on what it is. Like the PPP, they told us we could qualify for 2.5 times our payroll, that kind of, for our monthly payroll. So they have a formula for figuring out what you qualify for, I think, basically. And uh, just to uh, share with you some information we, I talked about in the Finance Committee, I've sat in about two webinars, actually three now, and uh, two of them were SBA representatives, and uh, they all said apply for both of them, and you can mix and match how you want to use them. And uh, anyhow, they were all, I don't know if they were drumming up business, but I think they may get more business and they know what to do with. But they said apply for both. You don't have to accept it in the end, but get your paperwork in, and then you can figure out where you are by the time we get done. And um, does this act as more like a line of credit or if we, it, when it's approved, we take a loan, but if we don't, uh, well, I, don't know. I know someone who got it early on and what they did was they were offered this, um, a lot of money and he said, he said, do I have to take it all? And they said, you should take it all just in case, because you don't know what you're going to need. We don't know how long this is going to last. And then if you don't need it, you can just give it back. So they decided what amount he should have and he 
and they haven't dispersed it yet, but they're, it's supposed to go into their bank account. So it's not like a line of credit, it's like a chunk of money. That's but this is money, this is a loan that we will be paying interest on. Right, and my question the on that was- year. The first year is no interest. And is there is there a pre is there a early repayment penalty of any sort? No. So if we gave the money back during the first year, then we wouldn't pay any interest at all. Yep. yep. That's good to know. And if we needed to use it, we could use what we need to use. We could pay that back over ten years, <laughs> and the rest we could just hand back right away. Okay, sounds good. Are there uh, any further comments or questions on this item? All right, hearing none, I will entertain a motion. Well, since I wrote the resolution, I'm not gonna read the whole thing. I'll just move that the resolution of the Board of Directors of Community Television authorizing uh, or authorizing executive director to accept an EIDL loan. Um, anyhow, I won't read the rest, but I'll move to the item. Okay, we have a motion, do we have a second? I'll second. All right, so that's a, a motion from Director Hall, a second from uh, Director Lanier. Uh, would any further discussion, or I will ask our secretary to call the vote. Okay. Uh, Director Hall. Aye. Director O'Driscoll. Aye. Director Lanier. Aye. Director Mannheim. Aye. Director Shaw. Aye. Director Gudger. Yes. Director Rand. Director Rand, I think you're mute. You're muted. You're muted, Matilda. I told you I was so shy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Chair Majors. Aye. Approved unanimously. All right. We have a resolution. We are resolved. We are resolute. Okay, uh, so moving on to item number nine, uh, the, pardon me, the update on fiscal year 2019-2020 budget and impacts of COVID-19. Uh, Joe, would you like to present I'll on this? I'll start that well? out and I'll ask Keith, Becca, and Tom to add their thoughts. But first I wanna thank uh, Keith and Mel and Becca who spent quite a bit of time on this. And the purpose of our having three finance committee meetings in a row was to try to kind of see where we were financially in terms of the impact. You know, the center's closed now, some of our income has changed, and um, we've had some, you know, you know, pretty severe economic impacts in all sorts of businesses, and we wanted to determine what it was in our particular business. So since we started this, we had the good news of the Paycheck Protection Program, and then in our first meeting, Becca went through and uh, talked about some of the changes she made. Then Keith did a special spreadsheet, and I'll let him walk you through that to determine what the number is that will be short at the end of this fiscal year. And, and then Tom can add any closing thoughts. There's no action required, but we did this for our own information and for your information and for the information of the uh, CTV community. And it'd be, I guess the buzzword is transparent and proactive. You know, there's all that talk, but mostly to see what the numbers were. So Becca, do you want to talk about some of the changes you've made financially uh, since the center closed and some of the adjustments, some of the increases, some of the a few pieces you talked about that started moving once the uh, stay in place order hit? Yeah, well, we've done, we have been really lucky so far in that we have, we, uh, well, in my report later, I'll get to the details of our webinar service that is new. And um, we are, we were able to change the way we work in order to, so a lot of you, let me step back a second, because a lot of you don't have a clear picture of what we do. So we, we do the co-working center and you know about that, but we also have a team that records and telecasts all of the government meetings. And we, the city meetings and the, the city of Santa Cruz and the county board of supervisors meet in their chambers and they're all set up with cameras. A lot of other places don't have cameras. They, we send people out with cameras to shoot those meetings. 
And we couldn't do that because of social distancing and they couldn't meet together. So we started doing this webinar service where we have, a, we have the kind of the high end webinar platform from Zoom and we taught them all how to use it for government meetings in a, a Brown Act compliant way. We talked to them right away. I sent letters out to them to see if they would want to try this. And we've worked with several of them. We've created all kinds of documents so people don't get lost and how to go to a closed session from a regular meeting. And it's been kind of, it's been just a, a lot of detail work, but the upshot is um, we've kept most of our clients that we're still doing their meetings. We're just doing them in a different way. And as a value added, they're on TV right away instead of a week later. So it, that's been really great. We've done that and that's been good. We've been able to keep our, our technicians busy and uh, we have maintained most of the income from there. There are a couple of places that, that decided to do different things. And so we've uh, we lost a couple meetings, but as soon as the shelter in place goes away, they'll be back because of the Brown Act thing will expire then as well, the Brown Act exception or waiver. So that, that worked out pretty well. And we have been, our co-working coordinator has been getting every, we have a mail service that a lot of people have. They don't, they may not have an office with us or they might, but they have a mailbox there and they get their mail there. And so he's been continuing with the mail service, picking up the mail at all the different post offices, the big post office in Scotts Valley, and then picking up UPS and at Federal Express and bringing those in. So he's in a couple of times a week, but he's, he's done the webinar part. The technicians put the webinars on TV, our government techs, but he does the webinar part. So we've been keeping him very busy doing that. So that's been a good thing. Those are things that we've changed. What we did with the, the uh, co-working center is we, if you have a membership, you can go in because people are paying their rent. So they're allowed to go in. We don't, we don't staff it. We do have it clean and we've just put away most everything. So they're kind of, it's sort of a pretty sterile environment. We left the music on for them because they asked for that. But um, mostly we're just continuing on in our regular way. And but we, of course, we don't make as much money in the co-working center as we did before because we don't have the cafe people or not, you know, most of them are not there and we can't bring in a new business. We have been renting some equipment, but that's sort of that part of the business is kind of really shrunken. But um, we managed to maintain one of the big parts of our business, which is the government meetings. So those are the things we sort of moved around. Was that what you were looking for, Joe? Or did yes, you and I thought we mind? could jump to Keith. And in your package, there's uh, this item here, and it's, it says FY 2019-20. Keith created that, and uh, if you go to that page, he can kind of walk you through, and you'll see what the bottom line is in terms of uh, what we believe. And these are projections. They're not final, but we're trying to see where we'll be at the end of the uh, fiscal year. So, Keith, do you want to spend a few minutes on that? Sure. On the page... The very first page, we're looking at our revenue. And after the titles of the accounts, you see the first column is the annual budget that we approved in February. And so this is for the whole year. And this is for half of that year having Becca full time, not as a contract person. The next column was how much of those numbers is left for us to meet. I'm sorry, no, the next column is actually where we are at the end of March. So Mel worked with me and gave me the numbers for where we are at the end of March. And I would like to, at this point, before we go to the rest of the columns, go down to the very bottom of that column. And you will see that our annual budget of amended 224 showed that we would end the year 11,620 in the hole. And that was gonna come from reserves that was expected, that was part of our plan. Uh, can I just interrupt for a second, yes. Keith? Uh, yes. That's on the second page if you're trying to follow it on, um, it, so when he says the bottom, not the first page, but all the way to the second page. Correct, where it says net income or loss. Yeah, I always jump to that <laughs> bottom line. You will see there in the second numbers of column of numbers that Becca has managed our expenses and income to the point where we were almost $32,000 in profit at the end of March. 
So that includes March's numbers, which means the drop off in co working we saw in March is in there. And even with that, instead of being at the end of the year, 11,620 negative, we were running almost 32,000 positive at the end of March. So let's go back to where I started at the top. The third column of numbers, that's the one I jumped on. That's where I took the budget expectation and subtracted the actuals through the end of March to give us what we needed left to meet that budget. And then the next column is what Becca is projecting we can do in that quarter. So here we have the remaining column, what we need to make to meet the budget we decided on in the beginning of the year. And Becca's projection of what we're going to do for this quarter coming up. And for instance, in the County Board of Supervisors meetings, we only had $4,000 left billable hours that we needed to make to make our budget. But it looks like from Becca's projection that we're going to get $9,400 worth of billings in this quarter. And so that's why you see a negative number over there. And what I was trying to do is I highlight a positive number, the losses in revenue. Well, in this case, we had an increase in revenue. And if you go down, all those meetings are increased except for the RTC and the, the water district. And the water so district, negative is good. Negative right? is good. So that's why you see at the okay. very top of notes, less income is a positive number. So less income is bad. <laughs> We've gone back and forth on which side this column should have. This is where we were when I made the sheet. So anyway, you get down to the bottom of operating revenue, total 4,300 operating revenue. And you see that because of a drop in miscellaneous income and I'm sorry, that was an increase in, in miscellaneous income, wasn't it? Yeah. I'm sorry, because of a drop in a couple of things. Um, facility and use. Is the facility big one. equipment the, use is the big one, right. Yeah. You see that we're going to come in with revenue in the quarter, $7,800, $7,900, less than the budget projected we should have had by the end of the year. So that's the impact of the shelter in place on the fourth quarter is that it would reduce our revenue that we had expected back in January for the whole year by almost $7,900. Mm -hmm. Then let's go through the operating expenses. And their positive numbers are good things, that's savings. As Becca has mentioned in several previous meetings, she intends to spend more on advertising to bring in this, this uh, uh, video conferencing business, uh, try and get some equipment rental business, that kind of thing. But pretty much everything else, you can see that she's projecting that she's going to economize in Q4 over what was left in the budget to spend. And let's see. And you'll see that the the big number that makes it this expense column high on total 6,000 operating expenses is telephone telecommunications, which was already there July to March. There's no plan to spend any more in the coming quarter. So that's something that already happened and we were still quite a bit ahead. Uh, but if you get down to contracted services, you can see that Becca's projection for the fourth quarter is almost 26, is over $26,000 ahead of the expenses she was thinking she might spend in the fourth quarter or left over from the thing. So that's where we're way ahead is in those economizing uh, numbers there. And the same is true of staff development and fundraising. You see almost $3,000 expected to be ahead and you get down to the total operating salaries and benefits at almost $1,900 ahead. So um, you can see that we're ahead of where we thought we would be by about $28,639 of expenses. We're doing better than the January budget 
adjustment projected. And so even though we're $7,800 off in terms of revenue, we're still doing so much better. Uh, the numbers are not actually on this sheet, but the current projection shows that instead of losing 11,620 for the ho whole year, that we will probably end up $9,000 ahead for the whole year. Mm -hmm. so and remember, I'm gonna stop there. Could I ask a quick question? Yeah, well, that's what I was gonna say. Um, you mentioned that, um, Becca, that you're going to move um, the cleaning service to a daily service. Do we know what the financial impact of that is? Well, that'll be in the capital budget. So it will mean we'll buy one less, a little less equipment, but it will not impact our operating budget. Thanks. And, and one thing I wanted to I have, Tom, do you want to just mention a little bit? Tom does a tracking sheet that we start all our finance committee meetings with. And it looks at the revenue uh, from our uh, co-working space. I don't. Do you want to comment on that at all? And then we can kind of wrap this up. You're muted, Tom. I'm there you go. Down the space key. I'm not. Am I, do, do, uh, oh, there you go. Nope. I think I think it just doesn't work. I didn't realize I went to a different screen. It probably doesn't work when I go to the space or space button doesn't doesn't work. So um, we have budgeted. Let me look here. the The amount we expected to be bringing in was fourteen thousand five hundred forty two dollars per month. That is the amended budget with uh, Becca going full time. And in February, we brought in 15,229. In March, that dropped to 11,601. I don't know, Becca, if you have a number yet for April, how we're yeah, doing. Yeah, it's 75,400. Okay, so it's, it's continuing to drop pretty significantly. Um, Becca will uh, Becca tracks that against our um, about our, our break even and I know she's going to talk about that in her report. I track it against what we budgeted and cumulatively for the year at this point, we are about 13% below where we should be um, if we were making all the revenues that we have projected. We're about 15,000 behind. Um, and we'll, we'll continue tracking that uh, through to the end of the year. Um, do you, Becca, do you want to just mention now where how that plays out against the uh, um, the break even? Yeah. Um, well, let's see. That number is in my. You mean for March? So, mm -hmm. well, keep in mind that we project what we'll make, but we manage the budget as we go along. So if we see we're not making that, we just spend less. <laughs> so it's not, it sounds like a big gap and it is a gap, but it's not, um, it's, we're aware, so we adjust. But um, yeah, in March, we earned, I have in March that we earned 12,000 in, um, and then- oh, This is, uh, let me just mention, this. so this may be confusing to folks. What Becca looks at, is sort of the actual numbers that reflect, uh, Beck, you may need to explain Yeah, this. I can explain this. We have two so sets of numbers. One is what gets reported um, in the finance report, which is yeah. a different point in time than what Beck is talking about. Yeah, sounds like we're cooking the books, but uh, what <laughs> happens is- uh, That's people... what makes our meetings interesting. <laughs> it's a cliffhanger. Um, what we do is I, I, I look at the numbers. I have a dashboard into DeskWorks that counts all the money and I can see what the co-working center makes like every minute of the day. I know at the end of the day what it's made every single day. And, um, I, and that's based on someone handing us money. Mel 
numbers are the ones Tom uses and Mel doesn't record the money until it actually posts in the bank. So if people give us money on a Friday, I count it, but Mel doesn't until Monday or Tuesday. So depending on when the day falls that I look at it, and I always have to look at it early, so because the board meeting, you need those numbers. I have to put the numbers in the agenda 72 hours before Matreya sends it out. So they're always a little bit different. But um, that's why I started looking at the month previous. So my, my numbers are higher because the money is in the building, but not in the bank. So for me, for March, um, I have uh, 12,437. That's, that's all about 800 more than what, yeah. what we show in, in the finance report. And on a happy note, it's $1,000 more than we made March last year. So. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow no, so i think we should mark this moment in time because it's going to be that way next <laughs> month but you want to have that last word tom and then we'll move on no i've got nothing more to say okay i think that we 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 stretched everybody's mind a little bit but i just wanted to give kudos to tom becca mel and keith because we spent a lot of time going over the numbers and uh with the paycheck protection program i think we're cushioned for a little while and we'll see what happens. So yes, thank you. Thank you, Joe. So go ahead, Tom. I'm sorry, I, I will add one more thing. Um, Keith's uh, spreadsheet I think is great. I had suggested changes in the labels for the column, which he changed and then when I looked at him later, I thought, man, those were a really <laughs> bad suggestion. So if you go back and look at it, the way I think of it is you've got what we budgeted, and how we amended it in February is the first column. The second one is what we actually spent in the first three quarters. The third one is what we would have left, the budget we would be working towards in Q4 had none of this happened. And the fourth one is sort of the, the Q4 projections based on what's going on with COVID. So if you do go back and look at it, you may that may be a little bit uh, helpful in terms of understanding it. Awesome. Thank you all for the report. Um, I guess the only question that I still have, uh, and I sat through the meetings, but so initially we were talking about doing a budget amendment, but uh, I, I, we decided to make this informational item because we haven't actually gotten the PPP loan yet. Is that right? And that's correct. Change things? Or the other one. We could also get the other loan. We don't have it yet either, and we don't right. know anything about it yet. Okay, so there's probably going to be a budget adjustment eventually, but um, or, or did we decide that we might not need one because we may be in a position well, where we don't need? To? Why don't we talk about that at our committee meeting? Because okay, sure. it, it's 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 such a moving target. We can yeah. say something now, and tomorrow it could be a whole other different. Thing. Absolutely. Okay, so just to let the board, other board members know, there there may be a budget adjustment coming forth, but for now we just wanted to keep you all uh, in loop as to what the current state of uh, affairs was. All right, so if there's no other comments or questions from board members, did, did anybody um, who didn't present have any questions on what was presented? Okay, hearing none, we can um, move on to the next item, which is the oral report of our executive director to fill in some of the details um, that we glossed over earlier. Becca, please take it away. All right. So exciting. Oh, wait a minute. I still got the agenda up here. Let me get there's my report. Okay. So well, I just gave you a I gave you a sneak peek there in Joe's report. <laughs> so um so uh I'll start starting with financial. I'm sure you've had enough of that by now. So I'll be brief. Um as as uh, Tom said, we have the ten ten thousand dollar break in break even number, and in March we were at twelve thousand. So that was Nice, not where we want to be, but it was uh, it was better than break even. And um, on paid services, uh, we did 13 government meetings in March, and um, we started a new webinar service, which I sort of described to you. And so th that has been like a huge. That's a whole new business that we kind of developed this month. So uh, that has worked out really well for us. Not only are we doing our clients, our regular. Uh, uh, regular government meeting clients, but we're also doing webinars twice a month for the, um, they have an interesting name for it. It's the Office of um, 
economic develop it's the economic development office that's what they call it and uh we're doing um two a month with them they're we we did a few they're really happy they um and they want to continue so we're continuing to do those and those are nice um those we also stream on facebook with maitreya's help and uh on our web on our youtube channel too so they go out uh, live on tv and over the internet uh -huh. and um we also we in march we uh the rsvp has been used several times the city used it to do some psas and other people are using it and some people are using our podcasting booth as well I guess okay, could i ask a question about the webinars yeah is that something where we actually have somebody staffing in the meeting as the moderator is that what we're doing sometimes we do the moderation and sometimes they do we can make them a co-host and they can run parts of it and we run parts of it and we run there sometimes for a couple of them we actually do their powerpoint and we we let people speak or keep them muted so in the webinar is different we have a meeting so we're all in here together but for a meeting like that we use a real webinar platform so there are panelists people who are part of the organization and then the public and they're in two separate columns and so we control them and uh, they can raise their hand and ask questions and all kinds of things so it's so, but what i was what i was wondering about behind that is then there is a sort of a labor cost that's directly related to the length of the meeting not yes. just us kind of turning them on and letting them go no no we have to be there we have yeah. to help them um okay so let's see um i moved past my spot uh oh, the webinars rsvp uh communication so um uh we have a line in our we have a line in the um, report that doesn't appear very often it's called mission programming and usually that's when um keith and i do a elected spotlight but um this time we've done a whole bunch of things we've done a lot of corona coronavirus reporting I've been able to um, interview the health officer again since we did it. Um, we did it once before, uh, before while we were still open. And then I've done a couple other uh, reports like that that have been out. So we've had, I think, five, no, four, four reports. And they've been, we, we posted them on social media as well as they've been on television. And then we put them on social media as well. And we're getting a lot of engagement from them and so we've had like six thousand new people visit our website which is great so they're going to and we haven't had that in the past um for a long time so that's good it's a little bit of um the difference is it's really local information and that and so yeah. people are finding it to be you know um, there's a lot of national information and california information but um, what we have to offer is information that pertains to our county and no one else is covering our county so this is um helpful do you know are any of the government agencies linking to our site with for those videos i give them the links so i'm not but i'm not sure if they're following through with that i've given the health officer the links and also shared them um with the uh pio i'm not sure how they use them or if they use them but we're sharing them around um the we have applied as you know for for the paycheck protection program loan and um we're also applying for the economic disaster loan which is um, those two things so well, they're both sort of in process we're very close to um receiving the paycheck protection loan and the economic disaster impact loan is just sort of a it's we're just in the we're just going along we're doing what we can do when when they allow us to do things so um, that is my kind of short report it's been a wild month but um i think we've talked about most of what happened already so there you have it great thank you so much becca um do any board members have any comments questions on that report okay hearing none just want to say a great big thank you becca for everything oh thank you you're welcome you're welcome thank you yes here here um great so we can move on to oral report, uh, item 11, oral report of the VAC committee chair. Keith, has there been any activity of the VAC? Have you had any Zoom meetings? Um, no, nothing to report. All right, okay. Then we can move right along to item 12, oral report of the board chair. Um, I 
I'd like to say my greatest accomplishment this month has been bathing almost every single day. <laughs> Though, um, so far, shaving has eluded me. So, um, yeah, I will... Uh, I will echo Joe. Oh, I did want to give Becca kudos that uh, she, she, she gave me credit for helping with the Facebook stream, uh, streaming for the county, but uh, I, I'm happy to report that I put myself out of a job last Friday. The, <laughs> the, the meeting went without, I, I actually kind of forgot about it and checked on it like four <laughs> o'clock and it was already over and, and had been streamed successfully with the proper disclaimer text. So um, yeah, so uh, I was, not actually involved at the day of the meeting, which was nice. Um, and everything seemed to go well, and um, the you know economic development folks are very happy with that. So um, yeah, I will echo um, what Joe said earlier. I just want to thank. I mean, it's been really impressive to see um, the staff jump into action. Um, Becca, of course, leading them all, and um, Victor and and Ian and uh, you know Lynn and, and the rest of the crew, and uh, really I'm impressed to see our finance committee members um, turning the uh, turning the numbers, and and of course Mel um, keeping on top of everything uh, under these trying circumstances. So um, I just want to give my thanks, and of course all the board members um, for you know staying um, available and meeting for our special meeting to get that PPP resolution um, adopted. So uh, that's it for me. Um, let's see, I will have to. Uh, item 13, are there any requests for items, specific items to appear on the next meeting agenda? So uh, in the oh, last well, minute, oh, sorry. I'm Greg, Eve. In the minutes for the last full board meeting in March, Matilda had requested that in this meeting we review the temporary check policy, and that didn't make it to this agenda. So I'm wondering if maybe we should put that on the next agenda, try and do it that time. Um, absolutely, sorry about that. I, I should make a note right now for myself. While um, you're making that note, um, the other thing that I just wanted to mention Normally, this meeting would have been the meeting that we would have brought next year's budget to the board. We discussed that in finance, um, and we expect to bring it uh, in May next month. But we wanted to just have a record for the um, for the minutes as well as for the recording. If anybody watches it, um, that just due to the COVID, we felt like it did not make any sense at all to try to be putting a budget together this month, given what's going on. So you can expect to see that next month. Thank you, Tom. I was supposed to mention that, but I got so excited about everything else. <laughs> Tom remembered. Becca, and we'll see how much time there is next time, but um, when we have the next meeting, one item is if you could just, maybe it's in your report, share information you've heard from other co-working spaces as to what they're doing to adjust and, you know, just kind of a, it doesn't mm -hmm. even have to be written, but just what you've heard kind of information wise. Yeah, I can do that. And by then I will have also spoken to Barbara. I'm sure I'll get her on the phone. Yeah. Okay, well, just in that context, because I know WeWorks is in all sorts of trouble and I'm very proud of our little group. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll we're smaller, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Much smaller. Yeah, we don't have any uh, foreign investment. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so what I have on my list to add to next time is to review our temporary check policy. Were we talking about making it permanent uh, or? Maybe Matilda could speak to that since she was the requester. Yes, Matilda. Well, I just wanted, to, you mean you were talking about the check uh, signing? That's correct. Yeah, I mean, I think I just want to have clarity you know, and that we write it down. I'm not sure we want to do it permanently. Uh, Becca, did, did you want to have it permanently doing it? You know? Well, it, it, is, um, there, it is documented. It's actually an official policy written down, but it is a temporary one. But doing it permanently would be, uh, that's how we did that at CMAP. We had, we mm -hmm. sent out an, 
uh, we'd send out the invoice with an approval stamp on it, and I would stamp, I would do my approval in real life, and then um, because Paul was all the way over in Hollister, he would do his through DocuSign, and that's and then we would write the check. We would get two approvals on the invoice, so we're doing it a little here differently. Here we're sending out the check stub and the um, and the and the backup. Mm -hmm. But it works great. I mean, and DocuSign is, you know, a lot of governments use it and it is, it is reputable and it's impossible. I kept trying, when we were trying to get our internet, I kept trying to send this document that I had the landlord sign through DocuSign to Comcast and it kept coming up there blank because you can't just forward them. You actually, they have a lot of security on them. They have to be, it has to be done the right way. So I feel since I pushed, I pressed the system and it didn't work that it's safe. And, um, and it, I think it saves a lot of time since so many people that sign are not in the building all the time. It makes it easier to get a signature. Yeah, if, if I had my druthers, I would like to make it a permanent thing. Maybe that's something that finance committee could also discuss yeah. next month and then come back with a recommendation for a full discussion at the board level. Sounds good to me. All right, pardon my omission. The text of the document of the, of the policy. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so if there are no other items uh, requested by staff or board members for the next agenda, we can move on to item 14 announcements. Um, uh, we already announced the date. I think that's probably sufficient. Uh, so item, uh, do, actually, do any board members have any announcements they wish to uh, make about uh, interesting or relevant happenings? All right. Yes, I, can, I, 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 can, I can make Let's one. Let's get it over with, with the COVID. That's not an announcement. <laughs> Well, the radio is still happening, right, Matilda? Are you still doing your radio program? Oh, yeah. I had a really good radio program this afternoon, and uh, I just came back from it. And uh, we had a pretty successful pledge drive, believe it or not. I mean, we, we aimed, you know, for a spring pledge drive for eight days, 25,000. Uh, we, we are probably, by the end of the day, uh, we have 20,000, which is truly amazing to me. Yeah. And, and about 26% of the people who donated are new to us. Probably listeners who never pay. Well, that's great. That's fantastic. That's great. Well, you have a captive audience now, so. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Okay. Keith, yeah. you had something to add? I just wanted to quickly mention this. Uh, I was working with uh, the libraries and Becca on the, this animation package for next year. Uh -huh. And the library... Uh, staff has contacted me. They don't want to wait, but they need something that works in a Chromebook. Whereas what we were planning was high-powered computers to run a really high-powered animation program. Uh, so I'm currently working with a library, and I know I had spoken to Elizabeth about this and other board members. Uh, they want to try and find a way for students to tell their COVID-19 stories through animation. So I will, I'll keep you updated. Um, I'm evaluating some software now and working with the library and hopefully something will come of it. Excellent. Exciting. A wonderful Sounds endeavor. Great. Wish you all the best with that and looking forward to hearing um, about what you managed to come up with. Yeah, I'm so glad they don't want to wait. That's awesome. All right. Um, so, uh, oh yeah, I saw a meme today about it was uh, you know, a teacher waiting to assign their students the 300 word essay on, on what they did during COVID and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. So, um, so they can tell it with animation, a picture worth a thousand words, of course, and 30 pictures a second or 24 a second. That's a lot of words. All right, well, we can move on to adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn our meeting? Motion that we adjourn. Uh, we have a motion from Vice Chair Rand. Is there a second? I will second. Second from Director Shaw. Uh, I guess we have to call a roll. <laughs> Secretary Director Ball. Aye. Director O'Driscoll. Yes. <laughs> Director Lanyet. Aye. Director Mannheim. Yes, please. Director Rand. Yes. <laughs> Director Gudger. Yes. Director Shaw. Yes. Director Laurent, yes. 
<laughs> Chair Maziarz, who's yes, muted. Yes, thank you. Right. Um, so get outside and uh, safely get some exercise if you can. Um, garden, drink a glass of wine or something. And thank you all so much. See you next time. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.